to lead to the message we have such a good God and tonight is is proof in a sense of how our God is faithful how our God always comes through we, we serve and we worship a good good God and and it's and it's funny when I tonight we were so, we were blessed in song we we're ble blessed in worship and praise um, and every single person that came up it was like a new gifting a new talent a new blessing a new, and, and in my eyes, in my mind, I was, man, a generation is arising. And, and I had some goosebumps thinking about it. A generation is arising that is uh, uh, beyond my expectations, beyond what maybe people might have a, um, a mindset of Sacramento of being. There is truly, and tonight I saw a glimpse of that, truly a generation that God is rising up in this city, in Sacramento. And finally, I see the word of the Lord being fulfilled. Because He is a faithful God. Amen. And He never, ever lets you down. Amen. Amen. If you may please stand with me at the reading of the Word of God. I'll be reading from 1 Kings, starting from chapter uh, 13, verse 1 through verse 10. And after I read the Word, uh, I, will, I will pray over this message. 1 Kings, chapter 13, starting from verse 1. And it says... A man of God came from Judah to Bethel, to Bethel by revelation from the Lord while Jero, Jero, Jeroboam was standing beside the altar to burn incense. The man of God cried out against the altar by the revelation from the Lord. Altar, altar. This is what the Lord says. A son will be born to the house of David named Josiah and he will sacrifice on you the priests of the high places who are burning incense on you. Human bones will be burned on you. He gave a sign that day. He said, this is the sign that the Lord has spoken. The altar will now be ripped apart and the ashes will ashes there are on it will be poured out when the king heard the word the man of God had cried out against the altar at Bethel Jeroboam stretched out his hand from the altar and said arrest him but the hand he stretched out against him withered and he could not pull it back to himself the altar was ripped apart and the ashes poured from the altar according to the sign that the Lord of man had given to the word of the Lord then the king responded to the man of God, plead for the favor of the Lord your, your God and pray the man of pray so that my hand may be restored to me. So the man of God pleaded for the favor of the Lord and the king's hand was restored to him and became as it had been at first. Amen. You may be seated. Cut it short. Uh, there's this funny story that I have, um, as, as you guys know, I have uh, two beautiful nephews that I love uh, that always put a smile on, on my face. I hope also you guys' faces as well. Um, there's this specific incident uh, that happened recently uh, while me and my dad were gone. We were sent a video um, and um, my, my, the oldest nephew I have, Azariah, he was in the car uh, with my mom and with Annalie. And um, there was this warning on the radio, a tornado warning. There was a big storm in Sacramento. And uh, while this, uh, this warning was, he's, he's, the, he's the type of uh, child that when he sees the gas light goes on, he said, we have to stop for gas. <laughs> what, what's, what's that like? And so when he heard this, this tornado warning that, that had uh, gone off on the radio, he started crying. He started crying, he started panicking, he started getting scared, you know, what's going to happen, what's going to happen. And, and then the funny part is, is, is he heard that it's going uh, south towards Arizona, he started saying, Buritorina, Buritorina, you know, what's going to happen with Buritorina? She's her, his, his, his grandma from Arizona. And he started having a, like almost a mental breakdown, and Emily was teasing him, she was recording him, of course, that aggravated the situation. <laughs> And uh, she keeps on taking videos of him, and, and my mom was trying to, in a way, comfort him in, in, in this time. And she was, she was saying, listen, uh, you are the child of God, you are the child of God. And then Ellie caught a video, he was kind of like uh, pulling it all together. And, and, and when he looked at the camera and saw Ellie was recording it, he said, I'm a child of God. <laughs> Almost to confirm, like, yo, this thing's not going to touch me, like, I'm a child of God. And what, what, I, what I love about Azariah, uh, my, my oldest nephew, is that uh, even though he's small and, and in his understanding, uh, he knows in a way how to have a relationship with God. He even, even prayed for his fish bubbles 
uh, when, when supposedly he was sick. Uh, he prays before bed so he doesn't have bad dreams. And he also prays for parking spaces. And God comes through. God comes through. He always says, Jesus gave us a parking space. And, and as I was thinking about that, uh, being a child of God, I titled my message tonight, You Can Never Be Too Old to Be a Child. You can never be too old to be a child. I was thinking about exactly his mindset, uh, Azariah's mindset, I'm a child of God. And, and then we find in this passage, it's kind of a, a, a weird passage in a way of the, of the prophecy of the altar. But there's a point that I want to take out of it that, that, that is central to my message. When we read in 1 Kings chapter 13, do we find the name of the prophet? Do we find where he comes from? Do we find his ancestral line? Things that are truly central to a person, to a person's character, to his own life. But we find one thing that is interesting. A man of God came to Judah. And throughout the whole chapter of chapter 13, it, it references to this prophet, the man of God. And when this king he even asks for, for healing, for favor, he said, Listen, you, uh, the man of God, pray to your Lord, you man of God. Man of God. And, it, and, and, and this year kind of, uh, I've taken a, a, almost a new approach, uh, which is, I also think it's also crucial, the first few times that we have at, at Victory, uh, we need to have this, this mindset or this theme for the year. We are children of God. Amen. And that is, uh, people say that, well, it's kind of like a, 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 a thing that I, I'm a child of God. Uh, being a child of God is a lifestyle. It is a lifestyle. And what I really like, I like to see connections as well. And, and Robert uh, uh, Tiff had, had an endeavor, I wanted to put you in this morning, which I, I was really blessed and touched by, uh, of, of revival. And I believe as a church, as a church of victory, we are seeking revival, not just for our church. We are seeking, seeking revival for the generation, for our generation. Amen. And like Amen. Robert was saying, not something that, that, that uh, he wants to, we want to have revival, not just so 50 years from now we say, man, when I was 23, when I was 25, when I was in my 20s, man, God moved in a powerful way. We want a lasting revival. Amen. That even in our, in our 50s, we see the powerful hand of God move. And as, as I was hearing that, and, and almost God was like tying it to my message, he said, uh, God was saying, I can give you revival. Uh, but, but it will only last if we have a lifestyle of a child of God. Amen. And so what I, what I want to preach about is, is living a lifestyle, the marks of a lifestyle of a child of God. First, my first point, a child, uh, uh, being a child of God means we are directed by God. We receive direction from God. I, I believe the greatest question that I, whenever I ask youth, so, you know, what are you going to school for? What are you doing? When I ask them about their, their plans, they always respond, the same question they always respond to me. I have no clue. I don't know. I, I don't know what I want. I, I'm going to school. I'm going to Sierra. I'm going to ARC. I'm going to Sac State. I have no clue. I have no clue what I want to do with my life. But when you read in the scriptures, when we see in the Bible, uh, when we are uh, children of the Most High God, uh, we are directed by Him. And there is a beautiful connection, a beautiful direction that we receive from our God. And I want to uh, use an example from Acts chapter 16. Uh, and then it's, it's the example where uh, Paul goes out on a mission uh, with, with uh, uh, Paul goes out on, on a mission. And it says when he was going on a mission, he tried to enter into a specific cities in the Asian, in the Asian region. And when he began to uh, try to reach those cities, he said that the Spirit of the Lord blocked him. The Spirit of the Lord blocked him. And he said he took a couple steps back and he, he took a couple, couple steps back uh, in the different cities and he began to pray. And when he began to pray uh, in a dream, he said the night of, in the dream, he dreamed of, of a, a Macedonian man uh, screaming out, come, come towards us, come, we, we need your help. And when he woke up from that dream, he, he knew, listen, we're changing our direction, we're changing our, 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 our route in a sense, but I know that God has called us to go there to preach to those people. Many times uh, when we live in this life, uh, things don't go always our way. Things don't go always how we plan it in our minds. Uh, but, but sometimes our obstacles can be our greatest opportunities. Our, our, our barriers can become our greatest breakthroughs in a sense. 
Many times when we confront maybe red lights or, or roadblocks, maybe it is something that God is doing, leading us in a different direction, the direction that He wants us to lead, be let in, and to call us in. And when we are the children of God, when we truly submit and find direction from God, listen, uh, youngsters that maybe need direction at this point in your life, uh, when, when you are directed by God, many times you will come and, and it will confront red lights and, and no's and, 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 and things, answers that we maybe uh, switch up our plans and mess up our plans. But you, when we are directed by God, we recognize those roadblocks not as, as closed doors for us to give back and turn around. What if Paul, when he uh, saw that, that, that he wasn't having a connection to those cities, that his message wasn't being reached, and then he said the Spirit of God was blocking him, what if he turned back to Jerusalem? What would happen? We read that he would never reach the prisoner, he would never reach uh, the, the, the demon-possessed woman that he reached in Macedonia. He would never reach those people if he turned back around. Maybe your barrier, maybe your obstacle that you're facing right now that is making things complicated, maybe God is trying to send you to take a different route. Because he wants to bring you somewhere else, maybe that you don't even think about, that you don't realize. Our greatest obstacles can sometimes be our greatest opportunities. Amen. Amen. Another point that we draw from this uh, example from Paul, it says, after he received that vision, that dream from the Lord, he said, listen, I am called. I am called to go there. And that God is sending me there. And in a sense, it gave purpose to the redirection. It gave purpose uh, to the switching up of plans that he had in his mind. You know, many times as a young person, uh, it, as we live life and as we make decisions, I, I, I have to ask maybe, why are you doing nursing? Oh, because it pays good. Why are you doing uh, this specific thing? Uh, maybe my parents told me to do it. I, I saw my bigger brother do it, so I kind of want to do it too. Many times we make the big decisions in our lives without uh, having any purpose, any motive to exactly why we're doing what we're doing. What I love about this passage is uh, when Paul received that obstacle, that barrier that he confronted in his life, uh, he also received his purpose for that specific reroute. And when we are a generation that is truly guided and led by God, when we uh, maybe change up our plans or maybe do something different in our lives, we know that there's a purpose behind it because God is sending us to that specific place. It gives us purpose, it gives us meaning. Oh, how much we long for purpose as a generation. I was reading a study, uh, I like to, uh, motivational speakers, and they were saying, how do you motivate the laziest people, millennials? millennials. And they say that we're the laziest people. And they're saying that we're not actually the laziest people, but uh, if we don't have purpose, if we don't do things with purpose, with meaning, we're not motivated to do that specific thing. Isn't that true? We are a generation that longs for purpose, but I will tell you one thing that is the truth in the Word of God. When we are directed and led by God, no matter what comes in our way, we have purpose in the things that we are doing. And therefore, we can have passion. And therefore, we can have longing uh, to wake up in the morning and to live our lives. Amen. Not just go on our phones, but have a purpose to live. Amen. Amen. Children of God are directed by God. Second point we find, children of God also see God. Children of God also see God. If you want to see God in your life, if you want to see God move in your life, uh, you must serve God. That is the way to see God. So I ask many, many youth I ask these days uh, of testimonies. I remember there was one time I tried, uh, at, at, at a youth that I tried once uh, to share a testimony. It was crickets. And I wondered to myself, man, uh, do these guys not have an experience with God? Do they not, not, not see God move? Uh, and many times we don't really see God move in our lives. Maybe we want to be directed by, by God. We want to be led by God. Uh, but when I ask for a testimony of living maybe 16, 18, 20 years in church, I say, uh, share to me a testimony how you saw God's hand. But we have no testimony. That scares me as a generation of God. If we want revival, if we want to be called His children, and we want to live out His will and His word, uh, how come we don't see God in our lives? And if we want to see God, we must serve God. Don't expect uh, to see God without serving God, without being uh, available like, like, like how the service was open. He doesn't uh, look at our ability, He looks at our availability. If you want to see God move, you must uh, be put, uh, in a sense, to be available for God to you so that He can move uh, through us. And in the passage that I found uh, that really connects to this point in 2 Kings chapter 6, uh, Elisha uh, was being sought by the king of Syria. 
And he was saying, listen, how, I'm trying to capture the king of, of Israel, but I can't. And the, the servants came up to me and said, listen, you can't because there's a prophet there that tells him exactly what you speak even in your bedroom. I said, I need to get that man. I need to kill that man. Because once I kill that man, I can get to the king. And I said that uh, Elijah woke up in the morning, early in the morning. He said when he woke up uh, in front of the town, all around the town, mm. there was chariots, there was warriors. And, and his servant, the young man that was with him said, listen, uh, I'm, 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 we're doomed. We're going to die. And it's funny because Elisha was not scared. He was actually full of faith and he prayed, listen, Lord, open up his eyes to see. And when God opened up the servant, the young man's eyes, he saw fiery chariots, angels all over the city. And they were more numbered than the ones that were standing outside. If we don't put ourselves uh, uh, available to God and try to serve God with whatever we can, as best as we can, we, will not, we cannot expect to see God move. Elijah was a man that put himself uh, to God's use. He was a man that, that served God with all of his life. And therefore, he saw God move. What a testimony. He took those soldiers, uh, as they charged towards him, he said, Lord, strike them with a blindness. He took those soldiers, and what did he do? He fed them. What a powerful testimony. And I want to ask tonight, what testimonies do we have of seeing God move? Of seeing God work, like Robert had such a, 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 an awesome and them. We don't want to live off of the testimonies of our parents, even though they are great and they are beautiful. But we want to live off our own testimonies. And as we see God's handprint on, on, on our lives, the way that He moves, and for us to be able to have a strong faith, listen, I have seen God move in my own personal life because I have came to Him and He had responded. Children of God see God's assistance instead of worldly resistance. Amen. Be able to recognize uh, God's movement in your life regardless of any circumstance. There's a, t a testimony uh, that I want to share in every circumstance. You, might, you might, guys might think, well, I don't see God. It it's almost seems impossible for God to, to split open the, the heavens or, or maybe uh, make me see angels, uh, fiery chariots and angels on them. Uh, but, you know, maybe we don't see God in that specific way, but we can see God in every little circumstances in our lives. Remember when I was gone in, in, in Chicago... Um, I was invited to serve for a time at this small church um, in Chicago. They were kind of like the, the ones that kind of gave me a chance, in a sense, to, to speak. Um, and I remember I, I, I would go there, um, and, and Chicago was a time of like loneliness, a, a season where um, I kind of left all my family, all my friends, and I didn't know anybody there. And there was times where I grew very lonely, stressed out with school, didn't have family, didn't have friends. Uh, the weather was really bad. <laughs> As, as everyone knows. And I remember I, I didn't, I felt really homesick and I questioned exactly why I was actually doing what I was doing. Why I said, why don't I just go home, warm weather, family, good food, Sunday afternoons, or when I go home. Uh, I have cousins, I, I have, you know, my, 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 uh, my siblings. And they invited me to preach kind of at a, at a tight time in my semester. I was like, you know what, I'm gonna go preach. I'm gonna do what I, I if I promise them that I will, I will serve in that church, I will go. And I remember I, I preached at that church, and after the service, there was a, this, this older lady and, and, and her husband, all of her kids kind of moved out. They were just them two in, in the house, and she invited us over for, uh, for lunch. And one of my things that I really love, I love like vinete, uh, zakuska, salt de I, I love those things. And I remember at that specific time, I was craving it so much, and I was like homesick. And she sat me down at the table and she said, Lisa, I didn't really prepare for you to come over, but I'm just going to give you what I have. And she put a, a big tava of something to be off in front of me with some bread, nice warm bread. And in my heart, I was like, man, the Lord is alive. <laughs> because I didn't need no flaming yawn. I didn't need ribs. I didn't need anything. But that's not the be off spoke volumes to me of God's faithfulness. Believe it or not. And I told the lady, I was like, God is working through you and, and, and moving through you and, and sending a message to me through you to this Tava de Sat de Biof. And she was blessed and I was blessed. But I ask you, uh, youngsters, if, if you've seen God's hand move in every circumstance, and maybe we don't see, uh, like I said, the heavens break out. But recognizing that maybe a Tava de Sat de Biof is, is God saying, listen, I got you, Nathan. You're not wasting your time. You're not uh, uh, doing something without any uh, scope, without any, any purpose. You're here for a purpose. If, if that Sadat Biyof spoke that volume to me and encouraged me and blessed me at that time, listen, there can be thousands of testimonies in your guys' life where God speaks in the small things. 
And trust me, if we begin to recognize even the smallest message, the smallest things in our lives, God will give us bigger things and bigger things and bigger things. And, and I can testify to that. As I began to recognize God and see God uh, move in my life and everyday things, I began to see the bigger things, bigger things, bigger things, bigger things. If you want to have testimonies of God move, you must recognize God's hand and God's movement in every single part of your life. Amen. Amen. Children of God, see God. My third point, children of God are empowered by God. We are empowered by God. In Ephesians 3, 14 to 19, it says, For this reason I bow my knee before the Father, for whom every family in heaven and on earth is named, that according to the riches of His glory, He may grant you to be strengthened with the power through His Spirit in your inner beings, so that love may, be, may have strengthened to comprehend with you all the saints what is the depth, the length, the height, and the, the, the depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Amen. When, when, when we are truly God's children and we identify that, we live out being children of God, we are empowered by God to do mighty things. We are empowered by God through His Spirit. We are, we, are, we are empowered to live out holy lives. We are empowered to use our lives as a testimony. We are empowered to do mighty things, even if we don't think we are able, because we are children of God and His Spirit resides in us. We have the power to do anything that He wills us to do. Regardless if, if we think that it is a, a, a big thing or a small thing, if we are capable of doing it, if we are educated enough to do it, if God is with us, if He lives within us, and if He works through us, and there is nothing that can stand in your way as a young generation. Uh, we, maybe we speak about revival and about mighty works and we kind of try to affiliate ourselves with that. And we don't, we don't find a, a, a click. How, how can God revive Sacramento through this generation? Maybe always on Instagram, always playing Fortnite, uh, maybe playing basketball. To me. How can God uh, revive and change lives and do healings and do miracles to this generation? Listen, there was a spirit that lives within us. When we, when we want revival, we don't want just revival to speak in tongues. We don't want revival. Yeah, that's amazing. That's beautiful. But we want revival for the power and the authority that comes with it. That when we walk into a room, uh, people feel that presence and that power. That when uh, we confront people that are sick, uh, we can bring light over there and healing. Because through the cross, we receive healing. And therefore, we can give healing. Because the Spirit of God lives in us. And, and it reminds me of a passage in Acts chapter 3 uh, when Peter was walking to the temple and there was a lame man over there in front of the temple and he was asking for money and Peter goes to him and says, listen, I don't have silver, I don't have gold, but I have one thing and this I will give you. And he, he lifted up his hand and he said, walk. And he began to walk. A lame man, everybody knew about this man. And what power and authority resided in Peter, but listen, that power and authority can also reside in our lives. And about revival, the, the greatest thing I, I, I want is to see, man, that there's a powerful generation that rises up. That there's, a, there's, there's a generation of authority and power that rises up in Sacramento. Uh, because it, it hurts me many times, and I'm going to be raw and honest to you, because you guys are as if my family. It hurts me when, when people look at Sacramento and say, Sac is whack. <laughs> it, it hurts me when, 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 I, when I hear these things, not because... Uh, I don't want to be known by, by the place that has the coolest hangout spots. I don't want to be known uh, with the, uh, by the place that has the craziest people or, or the most exciting time. I want to be known as the city that has the powerful men and women of God. Amen. That if we visit Sacramento, we will be blessed, we will be touched. Because God's people, God's children, full of power and authority Amen. reside in there. That's what I want to be known about. Amen. Not, that, not that, that, that Sacramento is the coolest hangout spot. I want revival in that sense. Now listen, if, if we visit Sacramento, God will, will discover mysteries in my life. If, if we visit Sacramento, God will heal me. If we visit Sacramento, I will be touched and blessed by the power of God. I am hungry and I desire these things. I know that you guys hunger and desire these things and we can receive them. But we must live out a lifestyle of being children of God. Children of God are empowered by God. My last uh, point that we have tonight, I know that it's, it's a little bit late, but uh, bear with me on my last point. Children of God are favored by God. Children of God are, are favored by God. And, and I'm going to read Ephesians chapter 1, verses 5 and 10. This is the kind of the, the cornerstone, the, 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 the central verse of this message. And it says, 
In love, he predestined us for adoption to himself as sons through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace, which he has blessed us in the beloved. In him, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of Wisdom, forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of His grace, which He lavished upon us in all wisdom and insight, making known to us the mysteries of His will according to His purpose, which He set before us in Christ. Amen. Amen. What, a, what a powerful verse. He has, in love, He has predestined us in adoption, in adoption to Himself as sons, as children. And in that identity, we receive a, a, a favor of grace. And, and this is uh, almost central to my point because uh, we cannot uh, uh, come and be children of God without being washed and cleansed with the blood of Jesus Christ. We want all these things, and I want all these things uh, to be directed by God, uh, to see God, to be empowered by God. But before all these things come, before revival comes, we must be cleansed and washed and purified. Uh, a, a passage that was really burned on my heart for this year that I started this year off and I also had, had, had a little in them over here uh, uh, Hebrews 10 when we walk in confidently in the house of God why? because we have a new high priest we are washed by his blood uh, a, a cleansing that lasts forever and if we really want to be truly uh, children of God we must understand one thing that we must repent but listen when we repent there is the grace of God that covers our sins if we want revival, we want to understand, we must understand one thing. That we had a Savior that died for our sins. We had a Savior that cleansed us. We had a Savior that took His life and replaced us. We should have been on that cross. When we are children of God, we receive favor from God. Grace from God. We, we sing so many songs and, and, and those songs talked about His grace. But many times I feel like we don't understand this grace. We don't understand the power of the cross, the power of this grace. We can stand before God and be called holy. Why? Because the Son covers us with His blood. And you can receive forgiveness tonight, my young youth. You can receive a freedom from those chains, from those burdens tonight, my young youth. Because Christ had died for us. And through the blood that was on the cross, we can become children of God. Receiving favor. A new life. Receiving light in the darkness of our lives. Oh, what a beautiful favor. What a beautiful grace. I'd like to invite the worship team. I'd like to invite the worship team to come up. And I want us to, to prepare our hearts for prayer. I want us to, 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 give, to give everyone the opportunity. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what's in your heart. I know that God knows what's in your heart. But I want to give us the opportunity to recognize uh, the, the faults and the failures that we might have, that we might be confronting. And I want us to also recognize the favor that God offers us through His Son, Jesus Christ. And the ability, the chance of accepting that favor, of accepting that grace. <laughs> I'm not sure exactly what stands before you or exactly what you're confronting, my young, uh, my young guys, my young girls, uh, the ones that are here, hearing the Word of God. I'm not sure exactly what you're confronting. Anxiety, depression. I'm not sure exactly uh, what you're confronting. Maybe friends, maybe uh, <coughs> or maybe things that are uh, that are hindering you from coming close to God and identifying with being a child of God. But there is a divine favor that God bestows on us when we accept His Son, Jesus Christ. There is forgiveness through the cross. There is there is an opportunity for a new life, for a new lifestyle in Jesus Christ. If you want to receive it, you can receive it. And I would like us for all, all to stand as the worship team begins to sing. And I would like us to take our time. I know that it's, it's, it's 8, 16, 8, 17. But I want us to take our time tonight and I want us to pray to God. There was power in prayer. There was power when we come before God and we ask Him to cleanse our souls and, and to restore our lives. There was power and there was favor that is available to us tonight. And you can take it, my young um, brothers, my young sisters. You can receive this faith by accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. By surrendering yourself to Him, you can have a new life. You can be directed by our Lord and Savior. You can see Him through your life. You can be empowered by Him. And you can be forgiven and washed clean, cleansed by Him tonight if you receive Him. 
I would like us for all to sing together. And after we sing, I would like us to go straight into a prayer and ask God to work and for God to move. Amen.